Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to week eight of our uh, tutorial. Today we'll be talking about map filter and reduce. So I think um, I don't think it was touched really well in lecture. So we'll be more touching it more in depth in this tutorial. Um, for map filter and reduce is we're just gonna be learning about how. Uh, we can actually manipulate lists. These are inbuilt Python functions to manipulate lists. So just uh, the goal of today's uh, tutorial is to actually try to understand how does map, filter, and reduce actually works. And we see them, how we actually use them in our, uh, we try to see them in application. Okay, so today we got like five parts, which is quite a lot. Uh, we'll see what we can cover, but let's just try first, okay? Um, let's just go for a little review that I made. Let's just go for a little review first. Um, just don't bother regarding the text. This is just like uh, something that I made myself uh, last semester. So this is the structure of a map function. Uh, you got the function here. Okay. Okay. So um, basically, uh, the function map will work like this, where it will take in a one function and one sequence. The function can be example like a lambda over here. And yeah, okay, and and then it will change the value of the sequence to its uh, accord accordingly to its function. So if you can see, a will be changed into uh, f a. So if I insert the value of a inside here, then I will get the output here f a. So I think the characteristics of a map function is that you can see that there's a one-to-one -one mapping. Hence, the length of the old sequence and the new sequence is the same. As you can see, that this is all the same. Okay. Um, that's for map. And for filter, it's, it's much more simpler. Not simpler. It's just naturally no, it's not simpler. It's one more step. Is that first it will try to map all the values a to k in this case according to the lambda. But then after it is uh, after it is evaluated to f x right f x will be if we will evaluate the truth value. After evaluating the true value, then we we will only pick the ones that are true. As in this case, right, the length of the new sequence might actually be shorter than might be shorter or equals to the length of the original sequence. Okay. Now so in, when we are doing dealing with filter, right, it's very important that for the function, right, to actually be able to be evaluated to a true value. So you remember, usually if we want to evaluate the true value, we will do something like x less than five, y in a sequence, or etc. So what happens if you by accident, right, your statement does not evaluate to a true value? For example, it's just like um, um, say it's a sequence of string a b to k and then like your function is just like lambda x x like this meaning that this will return the actual sh uh, string originally say this is our original sequence string a string b string c string g g h i j k and this is our filter function over here now if this is our filter function it means that um, the on the intermediary stage, this will be evaluated as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 
uh, I think I missed F E G H I J K. Now, because that's the case, right? We need to evaluate the true value, and remember, because this is not an empty string, hence it will be evaluated as true. And because it will be evaluated as true, everything will be evaluated as true, meaning that the filter does not really do anything, because like everything will be taken in this case. Okay. So yeah, when you use a function where the true value is not clear, just remember if it's not zero or an empty string or an empty sequence or an empty tuple, it will be evaluated as true. Okay. This is pertaining to our earlier tutorials where we need to evaluate the true values of um, values that is not Boolean. Oh, um, okay. Why is it if, or, um, why is it evaluated uh, as true for a lambda x x? Um, okay, that's just for an example when our sequence is just a string. Uh. Okay, so in this case, say given, say our sequence is a string and our function is x x. Meaning that at this stage, right, the FA is, the value of FA is A, the value of FB is B, C, B, E, G, H, I, J, K. Now we need to evaluate the true value, right? We need to evaluate the true value. Uh, I think. You need to evaluate the true value. Now, how do you evaluate the true value of the string A? Because it's not an empty string, we'll evaluate it as true. Same as B is true, C is true, D is true, until the end is true. Because there are no empty strings. Yes, because there are no empty strings, everything will be taken at the final stage. Okay, yeah. I'm so sorry that uh, you cannot send public messages earlier. Uh, yeah, I forgot to change the settings from the exam yesterday. Yeah, can you give me a moment to charge my phone? Okay, so um, that's all for the like the review on map and filter. Are there any questions? Can show me the sample code or not? Like, I don't understand how it works. I don't? Like, I want to, can I see the sample code for the map and filter? Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, there's no sample code, actually. Um, I mean, I can try to type it out. Uh, So, for example, for map, right? Uh, okay, let's try. Actually, we don't really kind of need a sample code. We can try to make our own code. So, in this case, right, this is the feature of a map where it actually like um, tries to change the value in the sequence into this new thing. So we can use function uh, according to function. So, like, we can do something like. Um, Def map sequence. So we know for uh, item inside the sequence, we want to change the value of each item in the sequence into uh, using the function we have. But then we want to store it somewhere. So we say this is a new list. So, new list, pad, this, So, this is map, uh, map for list. So, 
So you you have a new sequence, then like you iterate through the sequences one by one. Um, and then you change the value of each item into F. And then you return the uh, new list. Uh, if you wanted to tuples, just, just change this to tuple. I think there's no problem. If you want to do this iterate, uh, recursively, um, I think we can do that. So if a uh, sequence is uh, empty, else return okay um yeah so uh chanson this is the code la for map uh maybe you want to take it down first okay uh take Thanks. a sc screenshot uh before i move forward to filter Okay, so in the case for filter, it's very similar. I think we also need to uh, iterate through the list. Right, we need to iterate through. We create a new list for i in sequence, but then we kind of do a filter here. If f i then new list appends i. Oh yeah, I think the interesting part here right, is that if you can see here, right, um, the filtered results are not the F A F B F C. Uh, the filtered results are the original object. So in the case, if F A is true, then the out output in the filter is just A, not F A. Yeah, I think that's the important part. So in this case, this is filter. And so filter is a type of map, is it? Pardon? So filter is a type of map. Um, uh, I would not say it's a type of map. It's just that I do this to help you guys easier understand fil how filter actually works. Mm. Okay. So in this case, yeah, this is if len sequence is zero, else if. True, then return this. Else. Return. So yeah, uh, this is the case. Uh, um, okay, so this is the recursive function of filter. Uh, we check if the sequence is empty, then just return sequence. Now, fsec, maybe you are confused here. Why is something like elif fsec? This is just like basically if elif fsec is true, but then I don't need to write that out. Lah. This one is enough just to indicate that if this is this value is true, then I'll take it and I'll recurse the rest of the sequence. Else, I just have this. Okay. Um, does that help your Does that help you understand, Jameson? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, how about the rest? Uh, does it help you guys to understand as well? Maybe like give a thumbs up. You guys already understand about map and filter. All right. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'll move forward. Oops. Okay, if there's no more question, then let's try to do these six questions. Yeah, let's try to do these six questions. Um, okay. Um, 
Okay, uh, maybe anyone wanna try sending uh, uh, answering it. So where is it? Okay, so we have A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, um, given that uh, we have discussed earlier, uh, how the what is the output of each? Each, okay. Um, okay, let's start, start with A. Anyone want to try in the Zoom chat? What's the answer? Okay, please, please, please try, okay? Um, please, just send your answer, okay? I, I don't want to wait for 30 seconds for no one to send an answer. Please huh? me up. Okay, there's Muhammad that we have true, false, false, true, 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 true. All right, uh, yeah, I think I put it too hard. It should be like this. Okay. So um yeah, um the answer is actually I think it's true, the true, false, false, true, 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 true. Because remember, this is not a filter, this is a map. Right. So earlier we have 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is our function. x is greater than 2. As we are trying to evaluate the value of uh, x greater than 2. So this in this case, 9 greater than 2 is evaluated as true. 2 greater than 2 is evaluated as false. False, true, 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 true. So the output is a list of true, false, false, true, 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 true. Okay. I think the function itself is very, uh, the function was giving, was a trap. It's actually mapping. Uh. Okay. So that's how you do with A. Can anyone try for B? Ooh, very fast. Anyone else trying for B? Nine four. Okay, so yeah, actually, like, uh, like for example, like Nicholas's answer is actually for B, where we actually explicitly we say filter. Remember earlier, right? From this, we can actually use the values in A to actually determine the values in B. In this case, we know that. A, 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this case, we know that the false one is 2 and 1, so we'll skip that. So we can take a 9. This one is false, false, true, 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 true. So we take those values. Okay. Okay, so uh, for the for this exercise, we'll assume that map and filter will return list. Um, in Python itself, map and filter will return map objects. So there will be an object called map and filter objects in which you'll need to convert these objects into either a list or tuple first using the list function or tuple function. Okay. The data type for the output of map and filter are both map objects and filter objects. Okay, wow, very fast, Nicholas. A C, all right, anyone? C, C, C? I think C is very straightforward. Uh, we'll be mapping the values. If it's n, if it's n modulo 2, right? n modulo 2 means like if it's divisible by two, meaning it's even, it's gonna be zero, odd, it's gonna be one. Hence, if it's odd, it's gonna be true. If it's zero, if it's even, it's gonna be false. Meaning that O is for odd numbers. Yeah, odd, o is for even. 
E is for true. Uh, odd values. So as, as uh, you guys have answered easily, it's going to be O, E, O, O, E, O, E. Okay, next up for D. Nice, it's O. Okay, wait, what? Okay, what's the value of D? Anyone? Yes, okay. So yeah, uh, the correct answer is Ma M Matthew's answer where we have, it's actually the entire list. I think it's just like pertaining to my explanation earlier when you're, when, when your mapping is all, remember right, oh, this particular lambda over here will map your value into this. Because uh, the result of the mapping is not, everything is not an empty string, right? Then it, it means that the value is true for everything. The true value of the entire mapping is true because the, in the true value of the entire list is true. Hence, we take every single object in the original list as I explained before in my slides before. Okay. Um, so yeah, Abdul, it's not exactly right. That's why we need to be very careful with the lambdas that we use. In this case, the lambdas will map the value of the original list to an actual string so that actually like the mapping results, mapping will result in true value for every single value. Are there any questions for this? No? Okay. Um, question E. Question E. Sweet, it is 9135, but then it is in string form. Yeah, this filter, if you guys can understand it, this filters out uh, odd, uh, odd numbers. It will take the odd numbers only. And then this will convert your numbers into string, okay? And lastly, for F, anyone, any takers? For F, anyone? 8136. I'm not so sure whether that's correct or not, but I'll assume that's correct. So as you can see inside, the process is that um, So in this case, you can see that the process is that uh, from our original sequence, we'll try to uh, square them up. X to the power of square them up. After squaring them up, we filter like X square is greater than 30. Okay. Yep. Uh, no, actually, um, the string here will actually convert the entire list into string. So it's just like printing a list, print list. So no, uh, the string here will not convert the individual objects into strings, but it will just convert the entire objects into string. So in this case, you can see that it is multi-stage. So it's very common actually to actually do this in multi that we can actually combine like map and filter and filter to map you know, vice versa. Okay, are there any questions regarding this part? I think you guys, uh, map and filter are quite intuitive. So as long as you don't get lost, I think it's okay already. Um, any questions? So in E, right, with the map function, it converts all them into a list to a string. 
correct because it uses the mapping so it's just if the map converts each individual object inside the sequence in this part over here into a string well this one the string right converts the object list into a string okay are there any questions if there are no questions maybe a thumbs up Okay, those are that's very little thumbs up but then uh, the rest do you have any questions if not i'll just move on then okay okay so um okay we'll talk we'll move on to the next part um basically the next part is uh quite easy la. um Where is it? So we have talked about, so like in lecture, you guys uh, talk about like, how do you scale or square this of numbers, right? Um, just share. Yep, you guys talk about how you scale um, a list or squaring a list by doing this. Um, and this is your original function, right? Um, you have a sequence and then an end, you multiply it. Now the question is, uh, this is also the recursive function. So the question is, how do you do with a tuple? And no, I'm not going to let you guys try for five minutes because it's actually uh, pretty straightforward. Lah. Basically, if you do it a tuple, you simply just change it into a tuple. Lah. Okay? Not that, I'm not so sure why you guys need to do five minutes on this, okay? So you see, you just need to change it into the values of a tuple, okay? All right, um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it for question two. Like, you wanna change it that works for a tuple, then you just change for a tuple. Okay, next part is part three and part four. So later for part three, I'll try to explain like the application of the function map and sum. And then later for part four, uh, there are three uh, there are three functions given in the tutorial worksheet. Um, I'll be splitting you guys into several breakout rooms and I will hope that you guys can come up with the function for each Taylor series. Okay. Okay, so Talking about map, um, so we can. There's a way that we can actually sum all the digits in a number, right? We can we can just do a for loop and go through the numbers one by one and add them up. But then the question is, can we actually use map, right? But then map only applies to a list, right? Because technically, right, when we sum digits, right, say we is here one, two, three, four, five. Our goal is to sum. You can just use if it's a sequence, you can actually just like do a sum here. Okay. Even if you want to square it up, right? Um, if you want to create like a sum of digit square, as the question asks. We kind of need to square them one by one first. And then add them up at the end. So you can see that um, what happens is that it's very similar to map where we can actually do like f x goes to x square. So this is the mapping function and it maps the value one by one to a new value. And then at the end, you can do a sum, sum up and sum everything up together. So in this case, we need to convert the map into a list first. Uh, the integers to a list first. So this is how you, this is a way that you can actually convert your integer into a list. 
which I've seen a lot of times you guys have been doing. A lot. Okay. So I, I don't think you, I think for some of you, this must be very familiar. Seeing this kinds of function where you convert your number into a string and then convert it into a list. Okay. Then finally, you can use map to apply square to them. But yeah, uh, if you just apply map together, uh, this, these are string, okay? And you cannot do that. So what you kind of need to do is simply make sure that uh, you need to convert the value to integer first by mapping it to integer. And then uh, after you convert it to integer, then you want to just simply square it up. So in this case, maybe uh, don't need to try. I'll just show you. Uh, you sum the map of lambda x integer x times integer x. So in this case, uh, we have an initial number. It will be converted into a list. And then it will be mapped. So remember integer of one times the integer of one, integer of two, will be multiplied by the integer of 2 and you get the gist of it. Lah. And eventually you get the square of each number. And then you, you combine them together, you sum them, sum them up into a value, say, uh, x. Okay, I'm, I'm not so sure what this, the value is. Okay. So that's how we actually uh, use uh, sub and maps in in applications where we try to, like, you know, like we need to convert the value of each object inside the sequence and then like just like combine them together. Are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question on the periods like like the I did I didn't get the O E O E thing. Oh, okay, okay. The OE. I get the map object at zero x zero 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 zero. Don't know, don't know what string. Okay, okay. We, we are, we are. OE, OE is already like the previous part. Uh, I'll go back there later. Do you mind if I go back to OE, OE at the end of the tutorial instead? I can, I can screenshot a picture into the chat. Um. Okay. Meanwhile, the for the rest. Do you guys have any questions for uh, your tutorial part three? So basically what you can do is just like do a sum. You try to convert this into a list first. And then after converting this to a list, you want to convert this to the, the digit, the square of the digit. So to convert that to the square of the digit, you use map. And sometimes map is not that straightforward. So you need to, into a, uh, you need to, you cannot just like, um, you cannot just like uh, multiply them up. You cannot just like multiply that because like it's not easy. So like sometimes you need to make adjustments and sometimes your function in the map can be quite complicated. Like in this case, it's in this case it's int times int integer x times integer x and then uh after you finish mapping you can sum them up and sometimes you want to do filter as well along the way so it's okay okay
Ah, okay. Uh, just convert it to a list. Just convert the map object to a list, uh, Jensen. So just add in front list, bracket, map, the entire thing, and then closing bracket. Okay. Okay. I mean, just for the sake of this exercise, we'll just assume that the map and filter object will return a list. Okay. So, okay. Anyone got a question? If no question, please uh, thumbs up. Yeah, I only see three thumbs. Um, that's a hard, all right, the new Zoom feature. Yes. All right, lovely. Okay, um, with that, um, so you can actually use it for Taylor series also. Okay, so in this case, you can see that, um, you can see in this case, like, um, Am I doing it? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it right. So in this case, you can see that it's uh, Taylor series are sequences. So, uh, Taylor series are a series of numbers that is used to approximate the value of um, what is this? Uh, uh Arif. Oh damn, my math is bad and rusty. Uh, the values of this uh, I forgot what these are, but then so. In this case, if you actually pay attention, like it tries to uh, the value, it will try to uh, iterate from zero to somewhat infinite, right? So there is actually a sequence here, right? Okay, that's supposed to be four. So in this case, right, what happens is that it tries to map the sequence of um, See this one, right? The sigma infinite, right? Tries to convert the sequence of 0, 1, 2, 3, and map it one by one by a certain L function. Hence, uh, by a certain function in which this is the function right here, right? F, and then you sum them up. And then it will be uh, approximated to the value of cos x. So in this case, the f is f x is minus one to the power of x per two to the power of x x two x. Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let me repeat. Um, yeah. So, this is a uh, f. Uh, we have a uh, we have two parts. This is the first part, the eight to the n to the zero, zero one to the n, and then this is the mapping function. Which is equal to minus one n two to the power of n x to n. Hence it will give us fn, f0, f1, f2. Then the sigma, we finally sum them up. Okay. So that's how it works. So um Okay, um, so in this case, you can see that this is our function here, yeah, the CF, CF is our function here, x to the power of 2 to n, and then like minus 1 to the power of n, factorial to n, so you just map the entire, this function, and yeah, this is our target, lah. we need to get CF 0, CF 1, 2, 3, 4.
So this is a, uh, an example of the cost function. Okay. So uh, we have a sum map CF range zero to ten. Just remember, like like this one is infinite, right? This one, this part is infinite, but then like your sequence cannot really be infinite. So like you kind of want to set a range that is high high enough, but no need to be under infinite. That is just good enough, right? So in this case, uh, we have our mapping function, which in this case is represented by CF. This is our mapping function. And this is this is the function my cos x, so it takes in the value of x, so that the later the value of x can be inserted here. Okay, so I think just uh, try to study this function for a, for like two minutes, eh, for one minute, and then later on, I'll show you the list of functions that you can do with Taylor series. And I'll try to break you guys into different breakout groups. Okay, I think for reference, I'll copy this slide into uh, I'll copy this slide into uh, our Telegram group. Uh, this is T zero four. Okay, now I'll shift back to this. So yeah, there are several functions: sin, cos, tan, sec, tan, arc sin, arc cos, and arc tan. Uh, create six breakout groups. So in this case, uh, each breakout room, please try to come up with the function that I assigned you guys in like try to five minutes and in five to ten minutes and we'll see whether you guys can do it or not. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll see whether there's anything that needs to be changed. Okay, um, so um, these are the functions. Um, please create a function, a, a function def, a def sign x, like the one we did with cos. And then, um, yeah, try, just try to come up with the function. Uh, okay. I'll take us out later on. Uh, once you're done, we'll share the code in code share. Okay. Uh, I'll just put it first. Okay, I hope that I didn't close the breakout room too fast. Uh, so, um, okay, uh, meanwhile, um, I've shared a code share link in, in our Zoom chat. Can you just, uh, can you guys access it and transfer your answers there? So we have sin, we should have cost, 
tan second. I think cos we did it already, so we're waiting for like tan second, arc sin, arc cos, arc tan. Come on, we ex I expect like at least like one function from each breakout room. Okay, uh, we have my sin, uh, we have our sin. But uh, anyone from Tan? The Tan group? Lol, someone just started answering. Hello. Anyone from the second group? The sec? Okay, now I realize that there are some weird icons. If you, it's just, you just find it weird, then just leave it as it is. But for the red, for like um, third and second, just like write it as E or B lah. If you guys are confused, I'm okay with that. Okay, uh, yeah, I realized that and it's, like, it's a bit weird, but then I feel like here there's some some sort of if else statement here, so that uh, it's quite alternate thing. This B two F. Uh, anyways. Okay then, uh, for those who are in the tan x and sec x, if you guys didn't manage to get it, I'm okay. Um, okay, let's just discuss with what's, what we currently have. This is what we currently have. Okay, apparently. Is there any full feature? Ah, yeah, so. So I think it's it's pretty good. Uh, for example, sin is very straightforward. We have like uh, x to the power of two times n plus one, which is the part at the back, and then x my negative one to the power of n divided by the factorial of two n, two n plus one. All right, all done. Same for uh, a a arc sin. I have the factorial of 2n, then like uh, multiplied by x to the power of 2n plus 1 divided by this, arctan, a cos as well. Okay, yeah, um, if you are not done with a cos, it's okay, but then generally this is how you do it for the other Taylor series. I think uh, very well done. Um, I do hope that um, I do hope that for whoever who did this exercise, at least now you guys can understand and appreciate more how we actually use map. And in this case, we use range to generate just a 
a range or a list of numbers. It is very powerful and it is a good skill to be able to have. Okay. So yeah, for those of you who are who wants to keep the code, feel free, but I don't think you need to keep the code. You kind of can just like look at this and do it on your own time. Okay, well done. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate that you do this. Okay. So um okay, da, da, da. So yeah, the application is actually far wider than that. We can actually also use that for our burger question. Remember burger price, right? Burger, we did this for burger price. This was our version from tutorial three, where we do an if a lot of if else statement. Now we can use some map for this because into remember like like there are. That these are technically a function that converts the an alphabet or the ingredient to a particular price, right? We use dictionary for that before, where we put the values of the ingredients into the dictionary. So we can actually try to define a price function. So if the character is B, character is C is 0, 05, 0, 08, 1.5, etc. And finally, we can actually do burger price and return sub map price burger, meaning that it will map the price of each burger, each ingredient in the burger into price. Now, why there is no need to convert the string burger into a list first? Because, um, yeah, the string itself is already a sequence. Hence, it will automatically break and it will automatically be uh, mapped one by one by the function price. So yeah, this was our version two, right? See how similar it is. Like this is technically somewhat our function. And we just like uh, convert it one by one. So sub map price burger, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. Uh, Gladys, uh, for, is it possible to combine it to one line? Um, Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so uh, let me pull that up back up. Sure, you can actually combine this into one line, but then the question is, do you really want to combine this into one line? Yeah. Sure, sure. I mean, like, remember right, in map, right, this is a function. It can be a lambda, it can be a def well-defined function inside a nested function, or it's just a function outside. But then the question is whether you want to combine this to one line or not. Because this looks very long. Okay. Does that answer your question, Gladys? Okay. All right. So yeah, this is our second version where we uh, and the price we convert. The price is stored as a dictionary, and we just sum them up together. So this one, this was is this one is actually Gladys's question in the context of burger price, where whether we can actually like just like um, put them together into one line. Okay, so something it should be something like this. So lambda x and then like this is the dictionary right, and then like you take the value of the dictionary by using this key uh, indexing thing. Okay, so remember earlier, this was the earlier function where we try to separate it and we can actually combine them into one like this as a lambda. It's, it's very long and at a certain point it will exceed the border of your code box, but then uh, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not. So um, really in this kind of things, use your discretion whether you want to separate it or combine it. Okay. So in this case, we actually can create a one-line function for burger. So one-line functions are, are very cool. So like the one-line functions are a very a special kind of type of function where the function has only like one line excluding the function identification and without the semicolon. So it's a cool thing to, for example, the following one-liner returns the longest word in a text without with the commas and periods. Um, 
So yeah, this one tries to find the longest word in a text. And in this case, you can see that this particular function that you don't really need to understand actually uh, sorts the entire text and tries to find the longest word. Okay. Uh, um, oftentimes, I find these kinds of code uh, amazing. Uh, I find it uh, some some of you use it in assignments, and I really welcome it. Um, because sometimes when you come up with these kinds of one-liner functions, right, it kind of shows you that you actually understand what you write. Because it's really not easy to come up with these one-line functions. But then, because of it, don't abuse it. Because sometimes one-line functions are not easily readable. And yeah, because it's not readable, sometimes it introduces bugs. Because in one-line functions, oftentimes we assume that the inputs are perfect. There's this assumption that your input is perfect. And sometimes it is, we cannot assume that way. I mean, in this case, it's kind of, it's not that easy to read, right? Like in this case, there's the sorting part. And then we have S that is replaced, replacing comma with this. And then replacing all the dots with empty string as well. And then we have split. And then like the key is length. So like we sort it based on the length. It's not really intuitive. And then eventually we take the last item of the list. If you do not know what replace does, or you do not know what split does, then you'll have a hard time figuring out what this function actually does. But then eventually what this function does is to sort the words up. It's, it tries to remove all the commas and dots, all the irrelevant punctuations. And then it tries to sort it based on the length of the word. Split is just split. Lah. You guys can figure that one out later. So yeah, please don't abuse it. So regarding one-liner function, we also have one-liner function as well in Python, which is the last part, lah, reduce. Reduce is also like kind of a part of map and filter, but there's a reason why we kind of separate it out. So meanwhile, before we go forward, let's try, let's try to predict what this function do. Um, can anyone guess what does, redu what does reduce do? And what is the output of this function over here? Just type in in the chat. What do you guys think is the output of this answer? Uh, the output of this question. Yes, correct. It, the answer is 10. So the way this uh, reduce function works, right, is um, it takes in like it takes in the value of the first uh, function, two values, and insert it to the lambda. So it's one plus two is three, and then takes in the next value, sum it up, six, takes in the next value, 10. And that's how you do reduce up. Basically, it tries to reduce a list into a singular value. Okay. So yeah, um, in this case, it will take it in the first sequence and just keep on summing them up and with that. So in general, the uh, it can be represented in this way, right? You have f one two and then f again, f again, f again. So you take in the first two values of the sequence and then you keep on iterative, uh, take the value of the next value one by one. So if f is a addition function, this is how it should look like. So yeah, um, this is the case. Um, so you can in reduce right. You can also try to define like a multiplication. This one is sigma right, and this one is uh, I forgot what's the name, but this one is a sign if you just want to multiply numbers in a sequence. So if you wanna do that. Uh, uh, basically, you just need to change the sign, right? You just need to change the sign to time. So, in this case, uh, yeah, you just need to change it to multiplication. Okay. 
So, okay, why I don't really talk much about reduce? Because, yeah, uh, in 1994, reduce was a built-in function. But then, uh, in, around 2016, reduce was moved to a package called Thong Tools. Um, so, if you are curious what Thong Tools are, Thong Tools are basically uh, tools that are outdated or perhaps defunct. So, tools that you no longer use or people don't really care about, we just move it to Thong Tools. So, this is basically the you can say the trash bin of functions in Python. That's why we don't really talk about reduce anymore because it's no longer used, especially when you do reduce like this, right? X plus Y. Reduce has very limited uh, use and oftentimes if you use it for X plus Y or X times Y, right? There are other better functions to do it. For example, for X, instead of reduce X plus Y, we can use sum instead. You can use average and etc. So in under uh, functors as well, there are uh, two other functions such as any and all. So in this example, we can also like figure out like whether uh, there's, um, for example, this one in L1234, is there any number that is greater than three in L? So for example, this any greater than three for X in L. Okay, so you can check for any. Uh, in this case, if you can see, right, this is a, a list comprehension over here, list comprehension, and then the list comprehension will generate true or false values depending on the list. Okay. Now, if it's all, meaning that all the values inside the list comprehension must be true. Lah. Okay. So that's any and or. Any is like or. Remember the or, like when you have a lot of statements and you just like or, or, or. Now that's any. If it's all, meaning that all the statements must be con uh, conjuncted with the word and. Okay, uh, any questions? Uh, if there are no questions, then uh, basically this is the last slide. So the last slide is that there are basically a lot of one-liners that you can do. For example, like you can check palindrome. In this case, try to figure out what this does. And then you can print out a file using list comprehension, you can do factorials, and you can do the sieve of Aristoteles. And I'm not going to explain this for you because I don't understand it myself. Okay. So, okay. Uh, okay. So that's the end of the tutorial. Before you guys leave, before you guys leave, uh, I just want to ask whether you guys have any questions. Uh, any questions regarding today's tutorial? Okay, if there's none, if there's none, uh, I just want to invite you guys to uh, fill up a survey. Uh, we have a midterm survey. Um, you guys can go to surveys in cosmology and go to midterm survey and just uh, go to midterm survey and answer the survey. Lah, okay? You guys can go to cosmology survey section and fill up the midterm survey. And please uh, fill it up. Um, I sh we, can, we truly uh, appreciate if you can fill it up because oftentimes this module improves because of the feedback that we receive from our students. So if you guys can fill it up and provide suggestions on how you can improve the course, that would be very fantastic and it would really help us out improve the module. I know some of uh, it is, uh, this module is in its third iteration. It's getting better every semester, but yet we acknowledge that we, have, we still have flaws. Hence, we really need your help to actually improve. Okay. 
So um, if there, are, okay, I'll just stop recording here.